they, they call me Brownstone. I'm from uh, I'm from Orange County, Skin Edge. Uh, I got involved in this is uh, me and my brothers. We were a bunch of knuckleheads running around Anaheim. You know, nothing better to do than cause trouble. You know, my pops he was a uh, a member of an outlaw motorcycle club, and you know he kind of reined us in and you know put a little structure to us and got to talking to some of his bigger friends up inside and. Uh, so we started out with this, this Orange County skinhead thing. You know, there's there was, there was about 12 of us at the time. And then, uh, you know, we progressed on from that. I, uh, you know, I was a little knucklehead, man. I went I went to YA right out the gate, 1989. You know, I, I, I caught a seven-year bit in YA. I got busted with a bomb. We were going to blow up this church. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, we, we, we were against these Jews. And then I went inside, and uh, I ran around YA for... For, for years, and then uh, kept getting in nothing but trouble there, and uh, ended up in fucking YTS. So they uh, they kept me on a rock right there, called it O and R. They called it the Rock, and uh, I just kept getting in trouble right there. And they finally, I was the M number, so they they shipped me out of there up to Tracy, where they uh, they took the the youth committed YAs for uh, out of uh, when we were adults. They took us to X Wing and Tracy. I don't even know if that exists anymore, but they took us up there, and. Uh, from then, I, you know, I hit the pin and I got involved in, in, in all the, the inside politics, you know, and I, I was always the first one trying to make a name, raising my hand, you know, saying, yeah, I want to do this, man. Oh, oh this dude did, did what? Oh, yeah, I got this. Oh, his paperwork says that. Yeah, I got that, you know. And then uh, I, I just kept getting in trouble, and I ended up, uh, 94, we uh, we uh, went down to Calipatria, and, uh, you know, I was a, uh, a clerk down there in the, uh, program office at the time and uh it was 94 and, uh, a bunch of these east coast scripts ran up in the program office down there and uh so there was like four of us inmates locked in this little office over there typing 115 or whatnot back when we used to type that and uh they ran up in there and stabbed up a bunch of people and uh it, it, it was it was on from then well that created a little little strife between the whites and the black right there at uh at uh Calipat. And uh, we uh, went to a little war with him, and then we settled that out. And uh, then the next big thing was, man, I, I got I got caught on this removal. This uh, this kid Splinterwood. We weren't supposed to do any drug business or anything with with the blacks, man. And he uh, he got caught in, in the mischief, taking care of business with the blacks and buying dope. And uh, he, uh, they ordered him removed. So uh, we. Uh, me and my partners, we uh we worked in the, the main kitchen with him down there in, in the scullery. So we we uh we hit that dude in the scullery, and uh, we, we you know we thought we were gonna kill him, and uh, run him through the fucking the, the the scullery wash for the trays, and uh, you know, so uh, we hit him a few times, stuck him up in there, and then fucking he came out the other end screaming, uh, third degree burns all over his body, his face, and, and everything, and uh, cop up in the tower, he heard it, and. Uh, Started shooting down in the the uh, scullery there at us with block guns. And, uh, they they busted us all and stuck us back in the hole, you know. And then uh, I uh, I was back in the hole for a while, getting in trouble, and uh, then they, uh, they kicked us back out over the fucking uh, sea yard right there. And uh, we got over there, and these these guys, uh, these uh, kids coming in off the streets, they. Uh, they saw the skinheads and they saw our structure and you know the, what we were go what we were doing and how our, our politics were and whatnot and they uh, they all wanted to come in and start saying they were these these independent skinheads you know and uh, we drew a line at that we said no nah, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't having that you, you know there ain't no independent skinheads you either you come into this place you know belong into a family or 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 you're, or you're nobody you know and uh, these kids would come in with this independent thing and you know I'd be the first one hey I got this dude man I, I go over here and hit this dude. You know, I got uh, probably 14 good hits down there in Calipat before, you know, I uh, went down there in 94 and uh, ended up rolling out of there in 2001. Uh, you know, I came in on a fucking, uh, on one little number there, and I did the whole number, you know, just down there putting in work in Calipat. You know, I'd ship out of there. I went up to, uh, up here at Cork and Shoe a couple of times, and they always shot me right back down there to Calipat. I said, I don't know why. And then uh, when I... I came out of there, you know, I started bouncing in and out of out of, out of Chino on the Century Yard right there. And, 
violation after violation after violation, and every violation I went in, you know, there was always, you know, that's headquarters for everybody, you know, all the big four and all the skinheads and, and everybody, their politics is all right there. And, uh, you know, these people would come in, and I, I my, all right, I, I'm Charlie, I got this. You know what I mean? Well, you, got, well, you got something for me, you know, and I, I'm on everybody, doing everything all the time. And then, uh, I, I, you know, I, that was a K number back then. And then, uh, yeah, that was my second one, a K number, and then uh, I pulled out in 2000, 2001 doing doing Chino, and then uh, 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 this dude Billy Austin, man, uh, uh, he uh, got into some trouble with the Peni dudes, man, and uh, yeah, he came into Chino on a violation, and uh, we all knew his name and everything, and you know, uh, I ended up in the hallway with this dude one day, and uh, you know, I thought I was a little little tough ass youngster, you know, I had hands. And, had to fight pretty good, man. I ran up on this dude, and that dude whooped me from one end of the hallway all the way down to the other end, and they proceeded to take me all the way back down the other way of the hallway before the cops got him off of me. Man, and I was so glad they got him off of me. That dude was whooping the brakes off of me. It was funny. And I, I get back in the building, and uh, I, I'm in trouble because that dude whooped me, <laughs> and, and the P9 boys wanted him, and, you know, and uh started thinking about politics and prison going, oh, man, this is crazy. And then, you know, they gave me a a little fucking uh, list of things I had to do to get out of trouble, you know. And uh, being skinheads, you know, they uh, they always wanted to put education on us. And, and you know, and uh, all our punishments, anytime we had DPs for anything, you know, uh, part of it would be, you know, an education of some sort. You know, hey, you got to memorize this speech from this dude, or you got to write a report on this, or you got to read this book, something like that. And then, you know, they always, you know, for us, it was, you know, we had a no-hands thing. You, you know, if we were on a move, it, we, we had to, you know, put something in somebody. And then fucking, uh, I, uh, I'm running out of, out of steam here. I'm not good on the phone, but uh, I, uh... Hey, just to help you out, just to help you out a little bit, so so maybe you can tell them a little bit about how you became a skinhead and um, just how you got, how, you know, how you got pulled in. The, the process well we were like I said we, it was me and you know a couple of my brothers we were running around Orange County you know causing mischief and you know doing stupid shit and we were always worn with with, the, with these bloods that, that lived in our neighborhood right there and uh, my dad was a, like I said he was an outlaw biker and uh, yeah he saw us and uh, saw that you know there was just mayhem in the little group and he put a little structure to us and, and uh, we uh got a little structure and got a little hierarchy and uh you know we ended up you know we uh we didn't start out as skinheads we we started out as little you know little skaters running around you know skateboards thinking thinking we were a tough little crew and then you know we went from that to a little later on we became became stoners and then uh we started seeing this this movement out of out of down south in uh san diego you know out of fallbrook they had these guys called the warrior skins or the war skins back then and uh you know, we liked a little uh, little racism to them for some reason. And uh, we, we migrated to that, and we, we started going down there and, and listening to these metzgers, you know, uh, preach. And, and, uh, and, you know, we'd pick up, you know, pamphlets of, of literature from them and take it back up to Orange County. And uh, we were spreading it around to, to little the white boys in our neighborhood, you know, preaching that, you know. So, like, you know, we, we created this. And then, you know, we started out as, as we, were, we were the Anaheim boys. And then, uh, you know, uh, these dudes in, in the brand, they uh, they weren't happy with that because, you know, the whole AB thing and bullshit. And uh, so they made us change it. We, we went from that to uh, we were with the Anaheim Boo Boys. And then there's a group down in San Diego called the Boo Boys, so they had a problem with that. So, uh, you know, uh, one of the dudes in, in the Bay, he, uh, he suggested... Uh, you know, we were from Orange County, and we were skinheads. We should we should be Orange County skinheads. So, you know, we we, we took that on, and then uh, we you know, we we weeded out everything that wasn't white, because you know there was some little Mexicans around with us, and you know some Orientals and shit around with us, and then we just weeded that all out systematically, and became you know the the white power organization that that we were. You know, we were like the flagship as far as uh, white power street gangs in Orange County. You know, there was there was biker clubs and you know, of course the brand was running around a little bit but uh we were the like the flagship for little white power crews uh, 
it just it became a life for us. And uh, we uh, I uh, I watched a lot of uh, uh, good big brothers die. You know, I had uh, my best friend. We were in a park when I got shot. Uh, we were in a park, and uh, the uh, we jumped on the bloods at, at the high school like, like four or five days before. Uh, it was a weekend. We were at the park hanging out with our girlfriends and, you know, drinking and getting loaded. And these dudes come running into the park in the truck and fucking shot us up. And uh, I got hit in the back with a 38. And uh, my partner got hit in the chest with an AK. I laid right there on the ground with him there as they were shooting and watched this dude die. And uh, they, that was when it kind of became real. Hey, this is this is uh. This is life, you know, for us. This is, uh, you know, we're either we're going to die for this or die by this, and uh, that was uh, that was kind of our, our mantra, you know. We, you know, this is this is what we are. It's you know, all about white power. And uh, my dad, he, uh, like I said, he was an outlaw gang member for a biker club, and uh, you know, they weren't into the racism like like we were. Man, he kind of like uh, shied us for that. He kind of got on us and was all. Oh, up against us about it, and uh, we uh, he kind of like kicked us out and disowned us over that shit for a while, and then uh, you know, uh, that's kind of about about it for where I, how I started this. I, I got involved. It just you know uh, the whole you know the white is right, mine is right thing is uh, like inbred into me, and here we are, you know, 38, 39 years later, you know, still still doing the same damn thing on a life sentence, you know?